Do you remember when it was when I first contacted you about this? It was October 2016. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but hey, it's, it's finally happened. So I'm, so I'm happy. Oh my so. goodness. Oh my goodness. This is so bad. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very special episode of Fortnightly Frontier. I am your host, Darionator. Over there is my co-host, Meyer. In between, our special guest, like you've probably uh, noticed, been trying to get him on the show for a very long time, Pedro Camacho, the it's lead so composer bad. of um, the, um, well, is it just the Persistent Universe part of Star Citizen? I yeah, yeah, so far it has been just, I think it's, it's cool, pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Dude, oh, yeah. Hundred percent. I think it's pretty cool. I mean I mean I, I don't uh, think I don't think there's anybody in the Star Citizen community that doesn't love your music and your contribution. Well well I've been very lucky with you, everyone. I mean, really, it's um everyone has been very kind to uh, I mean sometimes uh sometimes you know, you know, our vision doesn't match the people but I mean uh I, I, but thankfully it does and uh, maybe the fact that I also play the game not as often as I wanted but I also play the game and I know I've always been a huge fan of of sci-fi really huge fan of sci-fi and and all all the games that came previously of Star Citizen made by Chris Roberts and other guys of course so you know it I mean I always have the dream what I wanted to hear in a, in a game mm. like Star Citizen if, if it ever existed so I had the chance, so I just placed what I had, what I dreamed about. That's that's cool. So, so thank you for enjoying my dreams. That's really thank you for dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank dream. you for sharing the same dream with us. Yes, I mean oh. we we are we're maybe not as talented as you are to no. to <laughs> contribute as much, but um, we still share the same um, same goals. You know the the talent is. I mean. That's so. Uh, that's that's so dubious to answer. It's such, you know. I I know really talented people that never had a chance to even have a paid gig in their lives. They're really talented at what they do. Some people that are really not talented have an extremely large number of gigs mm. um, in, in the world in their lifetime. So it's it's not always a question of being the most talented or not. Sometimes it's, it's, you need just a little bit of luck, and once you have it, you really you really need to to hold it with both your hands. I mean, you know, show what you were were worth. Mm -hmm. And um, I really remember um, that reminds me when I was when I can I know well when I when I contacted Chris in in, in the start in two thousand twelve. And uh, I already had quite a lot of stuff done, done. so it was not just a random person just just doing. And uh, I've been studying, you know, com been working for on uh, games for around uh, six, seven years. And previously, before that, I started classical composition for ten years. So, and it's not just a guy who just started using the DAW and and started doing music for like a year or so or two. So. I had some buzz, still you need a lot of luck in all that. And uh, I remember thinking about the Eminem song um, that is, uh, uh, which, he, which he, um, he did for his movie. Okay. Well. Like if you had one shot, yeah. one opportunity. Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty intense. And uh, I remember thinking about that. And you, I mean, I think about that all, you know, all the opportunities that sometimes I get in my life. So... So you, you mentioned that you it. um you're classically trained then you spent uh, eight ten years like uh, working as a composer no well for ten years I, I i I was studying studying composition right so uh started at around fifteen more yeah yeah seriously I seriously studied studied to study i I started doing music when I was i don't know well, doing doing original stuff. Maybe I was eleven when I started. It was in Commodore Amiga, some wow. very old 
Come on, I don't know if you showing your age, <laughs> just a tiny bit. <laughs> I mean, come, come with our amigas. Uh, I loved it. I, I mean, it was a, it was way ahead of its time for in audio. You could do stuff that you know PCs only started doing like ten years later. I think mm. it was very high fidelity in terms of um, in terms of uh, of audio quality, and, and I started doing music there. Uh, but and uh, but and around 2015, I, I started learning classical composition in, in classical school, and I kept going and finished. I finished studying like uh, when I was 25 or something. So right. then I started, and then I I started writing music for for for. Yeah, I started with games. I especially started with games because I, I always loved playing games. Uh, I loved movies. I loved games, but uh, games were something I always play. Like I was a ga- like I was a gamer all the, all my life. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I never stopped playing games. I I play like daily and com- in competitively. So not just uh, so. I used to be uh, like a StarCraft programmer. Pro gamer. Oh so wow! Okay. I was like, uh, no, I can't do anything right now. It's just. <laughs> uh, What's your APM uh, at now? <laughs> oh, my APM used to be 180. Oh, geez, so it was okay. not bad. 180, top level. When I was really in in my top speed, well, I was not the Korean kind of. <laughs> prodigy so, yeah yeah t- i mean i was 210 that was oh, wow maximum but I, it was i mean it was i was always i mean it was crazy and i can reproduce right now i remember but i, I can do it uh, it's, so, it's not too bad because you know sometimes when i see sorry sometimes i see uh, you know you know composer setups which have a lot of the de- uh, uh screens with yeah. touchpads and since i was a starcraft pro gamer i have I still have the dexterity so i just have to make combo t- with the left hand <laughs> and amazing. i have everything everything i need all the commands on cubeways i do them just with my left hand that's ridiculous so, it just, so it's just a combination of control with shift or control alt or shift alt and the letters between q and t and b so it never goes to the p's and the q k's and the l's and the m so you just in this left region and it'll just and i mean i think it's pretty cool so for it's, those it's, um yeah. citizens out there who don't know what apm means uh, apm stands for actions per minute so in pedro's heyday he was able to make 210 separate actions a minute playing starcraft and well that's over three a second yep <laughs> so over three a second well, you know i have to be well it's like the korean the well some of the apms are you know just repetitions of what you just made before mm. But you just have to keep going if you want to be warm, because sometimes in the middle of a battle, you really have to make like three, at least two per second, effectively decisions. Like, for example, in StarCraft, I mean, imagine you have like dragoons or back then was dragoons, then and then and StarCraft two was uh, stalkers. Uh, stalkers is a bit better to demonstrate that. And you have like imagine you have a bunch of stalkers which has range uh, range uh, gunshot. And you have like 10, the other guys has 10. And when you have one that is kind of starting to lose health a bit quickly, quicker, you have to teleport them to the back. And, but you know, you have like three or four at the same time, losing too much health. So you have like, and place them to the back. So the, the, the ones with the most uh, life take the hits and then they can come back to the battle and still doing the same damage. But they're almost that. I remember back then, I don't know if there's people in the chat, but there, there was a pro gamer on Korea that was uh, absolutely um, amazing to see, which it was Slayer Boxer. Anyone knows that name from uh, StarCraft 1? That was a bit old school. Right, you right. Know? But Slayer Boxer was the kind of uh, god playing StarCraft 1. And he, and he could... Uh, he wasn't very efficient on managing on managing the uh, the uh, the base or the production, but uh, when a battle occurred, he could do an extremely high number of concrete actions. And basically, I remember seeing in StarCraft One was a, you know when you had Vulture, for example, that was like a very weak uh, combat unit that will definitely die against I don't know. 
against, for example, tanks. I don't know, for mm-hmm. example, if it was a Tehran versus a Tehran, uh, Tehran, sorry. And, um, and I remember seeing that he could do with the dropship, he could, you know, just place the, the, the vulture inside the dropship before the hit hit the ground, but so fast, and he could kill it. I remember seeing him kill a lurker with one or two Marines alone, which lurker was like a Zerg unit that could kill in a single shot, like uh, 10 Marines, like, and they were dead. So the Marines will die instantly. Mm. Uh, so being able to kill a lurker with just two Marines and never dying, which was essential in that, I mean, that was pretty much, I mean, incredible. Yeah, <laughs> so it, I was never in that level. I'm finding it, it really tough enough. to like wrap around my head, but it's just awesome, like how you're able to mm. convert something that, you know, people will say, you know, it's just, you know, you're just playing video games. What good is that? Unless like you're in esports into like, uh, I guess, uh, using those skills to make your music production more streamlined and everything. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, but uh, well, it, it, the only thing that matters is the music that you do, not the way you do it. Mm. But in my case, it really saved me a lot because I see you know those giant screens with buttons to do well also. And well, if you, I mean, most of it you can do with combinations. I mean, ninety-five percent of what you use, you can do combination just with the left hand. So you know, just save space. And then, you know, and then you can, if you go to to work in another workstation, you mm-hmm. just need a keyboard and you don't need to bring the whole stuff with you. It's very anyway. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, different play styles for Star Citizen. For instance, you have keyboard and mouse, and you have controllers or you know two joysticks. But you know everybody has a keyboard, so you know it's it's the most um, most universal. Uh-huh. But it's curious uh-huh. like, w- w- that Meyer knew about actions per minute. Then I played a lot of Warcraft 3, and Warcraft 3, Frozen Throne, then Starcraft 2. I played a lot of RTS. Well, the, the game's popularity, I think they decrease a lot, the mm. RTS. I mean, I don't know why. They just Star- decrease. Starcraft 2 is still very popular in esports, <laughs> but it's probably the only <laughs> one that is. Yeah, but mm. I, th- I, don't, I don't have, I, what I liked about that was I had friends that played it, you know, you played because you have friends or people that you just meet online that are cool guys. And, um, and I remember, you can still look, look up in the, in the, in the internet, uh, if you look the Wayback Machine, uh, I remember creating um, a website called Port Craft, which was like Port, Portugal craft okay uh, it's still in a way i can i you can see it was live until up to 2006 which was when i started working more actively as a composer as a professional composer right mm-hmm. and uh and i re- remember making those forums you know there was no facebook back then at least <laughs> i mean people could say what they felt like saying in forums behind a, a nickname it would be <laughs> it would be flame wars and stuff mm. like that so um <laughs> before we dive into like more star citizen related like uh topics um are you working on anything else at the moment that you can tell us about i'm working but i can tell you about yeah maybe soon maybe soon maybe soon but it's really cool really cool i mean i've been i'm always working in more stuff uh but there's a one you know one pretty cool stuff i'm working on like let's see what happens uh i mean not one like two or three that i'm working on there but I still can't think That's about it. It's so sad. That's so <laughs> sad. I could, but uh, it's been fun. It's been really, really fun. But but Star is, is like um, uh, t- uh, up until now is the is a project that has taken most of my time. I mean, um, also because there's a lot of work that I've done in the past, and um, and it's a project I'm really proud of. I really I really have to really thank. I mean, I could never imagine. I don't think I will ever have a project like this ever again with such a you know great community, kind people. I mean, this is um, it's so very strange. I that's right. Never leave. I don't know how to. I don't. I don't know how to thank you for for you know for for being for I mean for for enjoying and supporting and you know sometimes I get messages. Sometimes I feel shy to answer. Them. I don't know then I get the courage to answer them. I mean, because um, 
Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm like this. Sometimes I feel I. Sometimes I don't deserve it. Sometimes I feel I deserve it. Sometimes I mean, I, it doesn't depends on the mood. I oh, think, man. but it's, but um, but above, above all, it's been a a real pl- a real pleasure to be uh, be doing this. It's uh, I mean, seeing it from where it started. So I can't wait for for the game to be uh, in a. Um, in a, a really you know proper re- release that I, i'm hoping sometimes i mean the, the game became very um, it became very ambitious and and in my opinion rightfully so because the the, the funding was really i mean it still is 1, there 000, right? yeah it was, it was, i mean one thousand times bigger than what they had to do mm-hmm. and instead of taking like uh, a huge profit uh, cut from it they I mean, they invest in the project to make it better. I think that's, that's so. I mean, there are so few people that will do that. So uh, I mean, so it was a very horrible uh, decision, and I can't wait for people to feel the satisfaction for all this investment, and uh, and to see all the music that I wrote for Stars and really to be heard in the game because it was a quite. Uh, there's quite a quite. Uh, I mean, I think there's quite a lot of music. This, I mean, it's. It's not there. I mean, I wrote it, and so, and the, and and it's not not implemented, or it was implemented then with the patches for some reason. The and um, and I can't wait to have it all. You know, um, and I think this year will be a great year for to do to do that to mm-hmm. to make it uh, all all all. Oh. You know, streamline because the, the tech is finished now. I mean, the tech is the engine, done. like the dynamic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, is it called the chaos yes. engine or something? Sorry, is it called the chaos engine or something? I forget what the name of the the, the music. No. Okay, no, cha- the chaos engine is something from Unreal Engine Five. Right, that's the thing. Their physics, but um, no, it's oh god, what it is? It's something to do with WYS. Yeah. Um, CIG may call it something, you may not necessarily know it because you may not implement it. But like, uh, it's basically like a dynamic, mu- uh, a dynamic uh, like uh, system that they use so that your music plays during yeah, specific yeah, points. Yeah, WYS is mm-hmm. like, a, 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 a organ- a, like a, an interactive uh, music system, that, which is awesome, I love it. Mm-hmm. And uh, But no, it's not because of that. It's, uh, that engine, that part has been, has been settled for quite a while it's more about the um the engine of the game that was you know there was a lot of tech stuff that uh-huh. was was being done then they talk to me about um like your work on star citizen and how much we've done so far i mean we know that obviously not all your work is currently in um if you could roughly like uh, spitball it how many hours of music have you done so far oh yeah i, I, I know i know i know i've what I, I've done around nearly 11 hours of music. Oh, wow. Uh, that, that is uh, what I, I did because we, we did a, a, like a summary so, uh, not too long ago. And that was, I was surprised because I had no idea, actually. I was like, wow, that's a lot of time. <laughs> a, lot of time a lot of music. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and most of it, I mean, most of it is. But there's there's a percentage that was reserved for you know because they really enjoyed it and they wanted to reserve it for, uh, for the a future. more honorable position in the game. Right. I mean, a few examples would be at least an example that comes to my mind immediately is like Majesty of Space, which is a mm. track I really loved writing. It's never been in the game, mm. and and they really want to put it because I know Chris loves it. It was one of his favorites. But it's been, I mean, it's been uh, on hold uh, been to be placed at the I right think place. It's in the launcher, isn't it? It currently is yeah, only in the Sometimes launcher. it appears in the launcher. I'm not, when, I'm, when I speak in the game, I speak actually in the game. In game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In game, in game. So, po- and, poss- uh, possibly when we get to Earth first, or maybe to Terra, which is the new headquarters of humanity. So, something very majestic and. and I, yeah. That will be awesome because uh, I mean I, I can't wait to see that. I know they've been working that for, there for a long, really long time. You know, I I'll be I'll be I'll be, but I'll be honest with you. I really love seeing all the love and work they do in each in each, in each planet, in each new planet. I mean, and I really love seeing the new the new uh, the new landing zones. I mean, they are absolutely amazing. I think. 
I think there's so much that could could be done in missions. Uh, I mean, I would, uh, you know, for I mean, for landings are like Area 18. You can make like a brilliant game all by itself in that. I don't know if you believe. I think we wouldn't need more than than just that planet to make to 100%, make a huge, yeah. huge pro. So it's. Uh, and, uh, that brings I me don't... to a question, um, if I may. Um, so, um, I believe in your interview with with uh, with Jared from CIG, you mentioned um, you spoke a tiny bit about your process. Um, so, like, when you go about making these tracks, are you given like a brief? Say, we want a track for a landing pad, or do you see the landing pad? How does it work for you? What sparks that influence, or does it is it does it differ every time? <laughs> I mean, sometimes I uh, I um, sometimes I get a video. Uh, most of the time, I get a video, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, and they they give you know the the artwork that they had like uh, concept art, which everyone knows that's usually public anyway. They they send it to me. They send they give me the overall description of what they wanted, um, which is I mean it's um always a bit uh sometimes it's a bit a bit concrete i mean when when we had herson it was uh was the, the landing zone where we had a more defined uh, style of sound they wanted very synthy to sound i mean they want a lot of sense i mean that was one of the directions so that was very um more focused so i did obviously i did because uh, that was even even more because it was a uh, something s directly said by Chris that he really wanted to hear something like that. Uh, mm. So so I focus and uh, he he mentioned Vangelis as, as well. So yeah. that was that was uh, and I of course I really love Vangelis. So there was no effort at all. So I was like super. I mean I had that feeling when I first saw it, but the text really confirmed it. And um, but so most it of the time does look like um, like Blade Runner as well. So it so it's, it's, it's uh, yeah it's yeah. But well, I did something different there. I I, I hope I, I tried to make. I did place orchestra there. There, but I try to match your orchestra to sound like synths, and mm. and uh, so you get you know cellos that are like distorted and electrified. So you just it sound like strange cellos or strange violins. And sometimes the violins are, are there pure, but m most of the time they are disguised. And I placed the the the, the, the synths to sound like expressive orchestra. So it was kind of reversing the usual nature of. of for how we use nowadays most of these elements and and um and i, and I remember that when uh for example for new babbage that really didn't have quite almost no direction our corp was another example there was not too much direction i mean there was the broad sense like our corp well something that in, incorporates cultures multicultural are you given much of the lore at all, or is it just like? Yes, a, they are. Yes, they, okay. they give me the lore. Of course, I also I also read about it, and mm -hmm. I already already kind of know about it. But but at the time, I re read it all again, mm -hmm. and then try to do something. I always try to do something that conveys me the spirit of what I see, and uh, is original. I mean, that's something that's that has been sometimes hard for me. Because, uh, so, well, um, I remember I, ca I can I can disclose this conversation I had with with a guy which which actually worked with um, with with Hans Zimmer, okay, in some movies and and he told me he's older he's older, and he knew I was working on Star Citizen. We were talking about that, and he told me something like, uh, "Don't do like Hans Zimmer." And 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 he didn't mention it because uh, you know um, because I would be kind of copying or something. Okay. I mean, stylistical. Try to be uh, something really different than. Uh, of course, there is. A, it's not too easy to go away for such a big references. But I remember, for example, uh, at least I try to make the music sound like it 
does it i don't like when people hear and say oh this like sounds like um yeah it, like that guy it's probably off version. pushing huh like uh you you make something <laughs> that you feel is like uh is genuinely in your own and then like somebody's like oh yeah that's that that's uh elton john like you know it, it, you yeah, want it to be it, that's pedro right i mean i mean uh you, you can't be too far away from reference that people uh that I also enjoy. It's not just people. I also mm -hmm. enjoy it. So it's no effort. And it's, but at the same time, you have to think like, okay, uh, a little bit is cool, but you, you still want to give the universe its own personality. Uh -huh. So it doesn't, doesn't sound like a genius. No, otherwise you will feel like in, you never had the feeling when you watch a big movie that you, you know, the movie is great, but then, but it just sounds generic in the music. There's mm. something, you know, oh, it just sounds, it doesn't sound like there was a personality movie. Most of the time, because of music, at least for me, it is. And and it's, a, for example, Hans Emery himself is a good example of that. He tries to reinvent himself in, in, the, in the soundtracks he does. And uh, which is, you know, it's probably, it's even harder because, um, you know, for example, when a, a director comes to him probably he says oh i want you to do like he did in that movie because i loved it and he says okay but i won't do it again i will do something different because that was that movie i want to give this new movie mm -hmm. a different personality want to grow so, and evolve yeah and and it's really hard when you i mean once you have the the, the palette the palette mm. uh, thought uh, th uh, you know discover once you have discovered the palette it becomes easier to do music, but but before that, while you are just you you take quite some time sometimes to experiment and do stuff that you know that you almost feel it will not work. And our corp was very hard one. I mean, in the end, I think people enjoyed. I enjoyed it a lot, but in the start, it was not easy at all. I remember starting with. Uh, which is which in many projects that I work on, I we have a um, bit more strict directions. So you don't, you cannot, you, you're a bit sometimes sadly, but sometimes it's good for <clears throat> to be faster when you compose. And there's a good direction, and and um, and it starts as they give me enough uh, freedom to experiment, which is good. And 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 an article, I remember I started with uh, I played some. I placed a Tokyo subway sound. Oh, right. Yeah, the chimes that a sub get. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no this, the chimes in the start, but, but there's there's something in there in the start. Oh, that brings us to a question <laughs> um, from Chad, actually. So you have all these like bits that don't necessarily like uh, make the cut. Um, so someone asks in, in chat, uh, uh, can you release a B-sides of the tracks? Or are those like, you know, property of CIG, <laughs> so it's not really something you can do? Well, I mean, uh, we could speak about it. I could show you in 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 a in a, in, a, in, a, in, in this, this kind of setting. I think it's right. fine. It's, it's it's absolutely fine. I release it in the sense of I don't think it's good enough to be released as a as a release. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. But mm -hmm. but uh, some I do that sometimes to get in a mood that feels me differently. In our corp, I can tell you I. I did two things to start. I I hired someone. Um, I hired uh, a guy who's a, like a synth patch, the, the patch designer for for he did uh, he he's Stefan Bear uh, Bear. Uh, I like his his work a lot. And uh, before that, I also used um, Matt Bowler, who's an awesome guy as well, is creating uh, patches for synths. Mm -hmm. And I remember I approached him and said, I would love you if you could create something that reminds you of a futuristic Tokyo. That was kind of my initial idea. I don't know why, but that's something that really, that was my call. Yeah. And then, and then I got the patches and they didn't inspire me properly. I mean, it was not, it were good, but it didn't inspire me. Uh, and then I saw, I went in another way and I, and I, and I, and I had a sample of a, a Tokyo subway. So for those who have and never been to in, Tokyo, um, in their subway at different stops, like when it, when when the train stops at like uh, say um, Shibuya, for instance, have... that station has its own like a uh, several tone like ringtone thing for each station. 
I didn't know that. I, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I it was just a really that was well. I just learned something. That's cool. <laughs> Actually, really cool. I, I'm not sure if I muted it in the end or if it's just so washed up in reverb in the end that you just don't, it just in a mush of sound. I think it's here in the start. <laughs> that, you know, that, uh, that ring, doo, doo, that sound that came from that uh, the sound effect that I had in that sound effects library, which was, which was a, a library I had to bought many years ago with you know random crowd sound effects and was, that was tagged like Tokyo Subway or something. Right. And and that stuff. And I remember um, I used that initially with much more prominence to see how would I make something different. I don't know. That was that was. I mean, when you want to go. Because I had literally no reference for anything that was done in that style. I really had to find ways to get inspired in other way. So that was how the way, and that's how the tone of the key, the key of the track was, uh, was set. It was because of that. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I used a synth that I programmed was not from the uh, actual, uh, uh, batch that I got from Stephen Bear, which I just uh, played in above it, which sounds like a, a harp, like yeah. a synth harp. But he said, "Well, it sounds like a bit wavy." And then more harps come in, but now acoustic harps with some, which you can hear later on. Uh, and then, what well, that created the initial, I mush of cultures uh just the initial then i moved on and i introduced something more african i introduced my voice and i mean then then the, the idea just started coming yeah So that was my voice, and then that was your voice. Mm. That was my voice. Quite <laughs> interesting. Are there, lyrics, are there any lyrics to that, or is it just no? There was some not, sort of some sort of creation. nonsense. None. Yeah, there was a sound creation. I didn't want to sound like anything, and then I I just tried to sound a little bit like. Um, I mean, not Western culture, not Asian. Maybe a little bit African. Maybe it, that. Yeah, would, I mean, like to me, it's almost. Uh, you, Lion Kingy, you know, like uh, so, like uh, you know, like, I guess Kenyan, like that kind of like um, yeah, vibe. maybe yeah. that, maybe that. Mm. So all of that mixed up. I, mean, I think I think it was, I mean, it sounded cool to me, mm. and uh, so that's how I, how I ended up doing well, darker. Yeah, so the awesome. also, so, and um. Also, so 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 that's so, sorry. The, 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 my answer was super long. I'm sorry about that. But, Is there um, a, uh, like from from any of the landing zones that you've done so far for the music? Uh, is there anyone that you, for some reason, um, love the most? Not maybe not because the way it sounds, but because it inspired you, or you had freedom uh, to do whatever you wanted. Uh, oh. <laughs> Mm, the one I enjoy the most. That's tough. Maybe, maybe the one I loved most doing was the first track when you wake up in the um, in the station at uh, uh, which was a very old one, and I I liked it because it's I don't know why I liked it because it sounded like stuff that I heard in my childhood maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, that one, right? Yes, that's that one. But let me see if I could find it. As you're looking for it, like, what's the most challenging thing for you when it comes to like composing for, say, this video game? Yeah, for this video game is actually uh, this um uh, this import the importance I feel to to really be. I mean, uh, what I feel is like um, I I strongly feel that. Or at least I hope, but I really feel that given the passion that Chris Robert has, is that Star Citizen is not an IP that will just 
die by itself when the game releases mm. or when it starts. I think I think there's so much good stuff here that I think it could be. I mean, it could be used in so many ways in the future. Who knows? I mean, I don't know what the future reserves after the game is actually finally released in terms of uh, globally uh, released or considered like a, you know, like a really solid mm-hmm. release. But like that. And, uh, that and, reminds and, me, though, by the way. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar, uh, but there is um, a series of videos about Warhammer 40k out called um, Astartes. And in the second video, in the very f- like first 20 seconds, they used um, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. they, they used the opening of First Light Epic. They did. Oh, yeah. cool! Cool. That was <laughs> very inspiring. You, you have, you have to to link to me, so I know that. I, I would. I mean, it's cool. It's cool because yeah. I, I know this is not uh, like a, a way to. It's like, I mean, it's for me at least. It's very um, kind mm. for them to use. That. Very cool. First light epic. <laughs> you have to link that to me. Anyways, yeah, I, will, I, was, I will. Yeah. Anyways, I was saying. So I think this IP in itself, with all its alien races, with the history that has been... I mean, so much stuff has been written on the website, you know, stuff that sometimes not all of us read, some some of, some of us do, but it's, it's not just it's not just a, an empty-handed stuff that was mm-hmm. just... It has a story, it really tells you how it started, and how, where we are at the timeline, where we are going... What's the issues that we have? We have like a whole star system lined up already in star map. And so things are very well structured. So I, I really feel that in the future, I don't know how much time, there'll be people that will take this IP and uh, and make, um, imagine a movie with it. And run with it, better. yeah. Or even better, given I mean, given the new technology, how is it evolving? Last day I saw the Unreal Engine Five <laughs> demo, which was kind of kind of awesome. Kind of, it's it's, it's kind an of. understatement. It was really <laughs> cool, and I when I saw it, I thought, well, this is this this is the start of uh, the future uh, films. I mean, yeah, hmm. I think in the future, films will be some of the films i mean like you have black and white movies and color movies mm-hmm. and as, and nowadays they both of them have their own space because there are still great movies that are done in black and white and there are great movies that are done in color and you have great movies that are done with very saturated color and movie great movies we, we done with almost no color at all you know filters color filters so you, everything is blue or everything is whatever mm. so i think another I, another another uh, dimension for movies will be to make you know imagine imagine seeing Star Wars for example I say Star Wars because it's it's already a movie so it's easier for you to picture out but have the ability with the VR set to have some degree of movement with your head I mean not everything but some movement you mentioned that but you know the TV show Mandalorian yeah. Yeah, they actually didn't use green screen to record that. They used Unreal Engine 4 on a huge 360 degree wow. screen oh, really? that tracked wow. the camera. So when the camera moved, the, the parallax or the background moved in real time. And that also okay. means that the Mandalorian's armor reflected you know, the scenery perfectly without any sort of digital effects. Mm-hmm. That's cool. But yeah. okay, that, that's really pretty cool. That the future is now. But, yes. but, but what I'm saying is, is actually another thing is like when you were watching the movie, mm-hmm. you, could, uh, you know, you have this shot, you know, the director says, you know, people should see this. Okay. But you wanted to see the movie a second time. And you didn't want to see what you wanted to look at that detail over there or that detail over there. Yeah. And, you know, it could be very cool because movies will have a replayability value that don't well that don't exist right now yeah one, i don't think that they will replace linear movies that we have right now of course the movies that are you know with fixed uh, camera shots because you know a cameraman is uh, someone that really studies the best sh- angles to mm-hmm. shoot at so i don't think we should lose that but imagine having that and a bit of extra movement for you to look at i mean for battles that will be awesome yeah I think. Mm-hmm. And, do you um, have vr 
I, do, I still don't have VR. Right. Don't there, there are some VR games out there that are pretty much that, you know, like interactive movies that you can like move your head around. They're not mainstream, but I think I some know. exist. Mm. I didn't buy the first generation because I tested it and then it was awesome, but the quality was really yeah. still low. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's come a long way right now. It. Yeah. Now it's much better, but still, I think, I think there's still a lot of apparatus. I think... I'm not sure. I'm not sure because, you know, some very cool games came out right now and I feel very tempted to get it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will get it. But maybe I'm pretty sure I will get it uh, in the next generation. I will almost surely will get it because I think the the the, the quality and the, uh, the lag will be almost zero and mm -hmm. I think the quality of image will be absolutely fantastic. And And I think that uh, having the ability to have a video a film like that, I mean, some films would just have like a five or ten degrees tilt for you to see around. Maybe other movies will have a bit more. You know, it depends on on the on the director. But I think that Star Citizen could do be one of the movies that go into that direction, right? Uh, in the future, you know, yeah. some yeah. years ago. Well, Chris has mentioned that um, the uh, scenes. Um, of the cutscenes in Squadron Forty Two, you'll be able to see the way the um, the uh, the DP wants to, uh, with mm -hmm. all the well the choice um, um, angles and cuts, or you could just um, tab out and then walk in the scene while it's playing out. I think that would be an amazing thing uh, wow. for for a movie to do as well. Like so, you could watch it the way it was recorded, or you could step out. And, and being part of it, wow, well, that's yeah. that's really very in. in I don't, not sure if the movies, mainstream movies, will go all all the way into there, but that's really amazing because mm. it, I mean, that will be, I'll be, that would be awesome, really. But um, but I was saying when I was composing, so when I compose each each scenery, each scenery. I my it's difficult for me for this game is difficult because I want to give enough material if if any director came afterwards I want to make a movie in a certain planet if they wanted to reference the original soundtrack they will have enough material to make a full soundtrack out of that so I want each um landing zone to be um, enoughly different mm -hmm. for the, the professional that I mean the composer will be hired for that movie which could be me or whoever else i don't know it could be very distant future where i'll not no longer be here and uh, they will have enough material to make something that felt like from that planet and not something from i mean you can have the star scenes, but you want you maybe wanted to focus just on that planet. That they have their own soundscape. Yeah, without some of the obvious uh, stuff that has been done until now. For example, uh, Art Corp is very obviously kind of you know futuristic punk, and we all we we usually have a kind of a set idea what we want for that. We want something that sounds drums distorted, synths very hard, and you know. And I, and I really didn't want to reflect that in the music on because if I did that, I would be just making Area 18 like a copycat of something that we already know. I wanted it to sound like like Area 18, like uh, R-Corp. And I hope I've been doing that. I don't know. Sometimes I'll be more successful than than, than ours, but that's so. It is so so responding to the question is uh, that's the biggest challenge for composing for a, such a video game right uh and does it how do you feel about the overall goal of star citizen having a hundred uh star systems with landing zones like is it even possible to create that much diversity i think i think um i think this project is a is a game of passion for for chris roberts that's absolutely for sure in every um in every in every possible aspect of it he gives it to each part of it a lot of love and and i think you never you never get a new landing zone and feel like oh this is i mean this sounds, looks like crap looks like it was rushed out and you feel like 
you know, oh, this is the the same stuff that I I really I really hate when I see games that oh, this is the, like the old planet just with new lightings and new trees or something like that. You have you ever felt that in games? I felt that a ton of times, and that feels like. And that feels like cheating or something, you know. I mean, yeah, you got a lot of zones, but you, you don't have actually a lot of zones. You just have the same zones, just rehashed. Well, which is, so what I, what I feel is that he's now focused on making new building blocks always, always different, always new. And then at some point he could, when he, when he has like a few more, I think this is what I'm in my mind. I didn't speak with anyone about this, so just uh, just me thinking out loud. He can combine elements from one and from from here and from here. Even though you're combining, they are all so diverse that you don't feel like it's a a real rehash, you know. And then you can multiply the number of of places to visit, which which can be important for the economy, etc. Uh, things. I think. Uh, I hope. This is my opinion. But of course, some people just want to have the 100 places right now and don't care about how different they are. I, I, you know, I know, I hope we get just more places that are really, really unique. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the, the concept art from Crusader is completely different than anything. I mean, can you imagine? Imagine. You had, I mean, if you, a normal video game developer will have a planet like, like uh, Lordville, which was pretty awesome. Everyone loved it, right? Mm -hmm. What would any developer do? Well, let's make a few more Lordvilles, at least five or ten. We just change some stuff. We change the main buildings, and then kind of rehash the stuff, which is possible actually in in the tech that he that uh, Star Citizen has. Yeah. I think we will be fine. Will be nice, actually. The artists are good enough to to try to make it a bit different. But then, you know, but after at the Lordville, Chris Arp said, "Oh, now we're making Arcorp. Oh, yeah. How? What? What can we reuse from from Lordville? Oh, absolutely nothing. It would be from scratch. Why is that? Because I want a full, a full city scale planet. And well, no one's done it. That's why I'm going to do it. Let's do it. But then it's going to take it like a year to, to just to get the tech doing what you want. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it because that's what I love. I I really want this. As I said, this IP is just not one IP that that they are doing. Then they are moving now down to, to the next one or something. I feel at least at least until now that's always what I felt in all the conversation, all all the stuff that I, that I seen from the game is each zone is very different is very different and that's a i mean i think that's a blessing i i think i can i think uh i would not be interested in visiting 10 r corps and 10 lorevilles oh 100 and and 10 new babbages i mean it would be interesting we could do some gameplay mechanics and make it a bit more interesting like saying if you want to get this gun you have to go to that Lordville 2 and then go to New Badge 4 and talk, speak with that guy and then go to Lordville 5 which just exists on that Lordville file and you know just make people grind for their time to, to make to get items which is cool but I I always I, I personally always saw Star Citizen like a, like a piece of art not just a, not just a game like a piece of art it's like, imagine like having Leonardo da Vinci painting and in front of you. I mean, that's how I see the planets being done. They're like little pieces, little or big yeah. <laughs> pieces of art. And you go there to admire that piece of art. And I think in the future, and um, I think this game will uh, will always be referenced in the future for as art direction for future movies and future games. I really feel directors will look at, you know, will kind of use Star Citizen to make shots for their new movie and then just rehash it to look different because it's so inspiring. Everything is so cool. Have you seen that new Babbage you can see from any angle? It looks awesome in any angle. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, to me it does, but uh, it, it's just... And it's not only the day, it's on the night, it's always, always awesome as well because there's a complete new, ah, I mean, and that's that's something that makes me nervous when I make music for a new Langing Zone and I look all at all that, sometimes not with the full fidelity, sometimes I just have, you know, initial videos that 
really inspire me already. But then when I see it live, which is when by the time everyone sees it, most of the time I say, whoa, thank God I, I spent a lot of time with music because it really looks so much better. It's not because they didn't want to give me, it's mm. because it wasn't bad. Because Chris Roberts is always <clears throat> trying to improve until the latest minute, until it goes live. So that's when we see it. Um, and so I think when I get the assignment to do new learning I'm saying there are so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of artists here and I'm the only guy doing music. I better not screw this up. Not only because of the fans, but also because of the arts. I mean, can you imagine spending like five or six months of your life doing something and then crap music goes up top of it? Uh-huh. That would be frustrating. I feel. I mean, that's what I feel. So, does it, I, think, I hope it, it answers a little bit what you said. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, in a way, I, actually, yeah. I was actually meaning like, um, in terms of music, is it possible to create enough diversity to to cover oh, yeah. every every um, landing zone? In future. So, like you like you said, uh, uh, long, Chris Roberts um, is um, like is building building blocks for landing zones. So like the 50th or oh, okay, the 20th landing zone is going to be used is going to be using um uh building blocks let's say from Norval but with a different I don't know. Texture. I don't know. Well, I, let's I, let's just say let's just say that. No, no, it's I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. It, would it be possible to do that with music as well or do you think like you will always ha- want to create new music? It depends on, on on the on the origins and the lore of the of the place, and I, I think I will always go there to see what things could be common or not. Uh, but for example, if there was a sister Arcor planet that actually looked completely different, but was in the same style of complete uh, full scale planet, like Synth World, for instance, for example, I think I will definitely probably reuse the melody. Okay, I'm I'm singing like I'm sorry, I didn't use the reference to, to be sure. I mean let's put some rask. Sorry, the samples I was were loading. Sorry. Remember? So mm. maybe you could reuse that from, from our code and, and into that kind of different, uh, different, give a different flavor. I'm not sure if I have something loaded here That's awesome. that I, could, that I could, could use in a second. Probably I don't have, but... I mean... This is special and look. This patch isn't that inspiring anymore. You know, but. honestly, I mean, for synth world, that same is it? Do you call it a light motif in in music? But that same, yeah, yeah that would work for synth world because it's like our corp but uncompleted. Or just make a reharmonization. That's nuts. Uh, have in mind, I didn't prepare for this, so I, I literally. I'm just. Just using a patch I had preloaded here for some reason. Well, for someone who didn't prepare, that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> See, and uh, it's just a bunch of stuff. Let's see if I have something better here. And uh, no, it's not good enough. Uh, this is drums. Yeah have like big drums and and then low sense or something i don't know who knows 
could we could use some so much stuff you know what is good is to, to create a new template for that and but you reuse some stuff you don't want to make the music always different from a place to place but right now the cities are so different from one another that, that i think it, it really justified the difference in in the palettes of sounds that mm. uh, uh, they were so different one is in a in a in a, in a very in like in the desert another is a full scale planet another snow planet i mean sounds very different and then you, you can't forget green hacks that had all that synth uh, i don't know if you remember the music the, which uh, was very synthy i i like doing it and awesome. then also another i uh, had one from um um jesus christ uh, name levski of course levski that has that you know, kind of uh, strange. The music is a bit different from all the rest. Has percussion, like so, kind of um, soft percussion, and with uh, water stuff on top of it. I really, I really enjoy doing that one. I think, I think it fits Levski very well because it gives the, the Levski. You know, it's 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 you know it's uh it's under underground. It's in the like you know rocky planet, but the music gives it like a more not so serious tone because it's you know you're not there because you're an outlaw you're there because you you're just a smuggler or trader or something you know so it gives that kind of cool vibe yeah exactly that cool people. vibe i was gonna say the same cool thing. <laughs> so it was if it was too dark for the dark stuff i mean it can be too dark <laughs> in mm. combination i mean that's uh, so on the uh, on, on the subject of genres because you spoke earlier about um how Star Citizen just has so many things. It covers a wide range of genres, you know? Like, it doesn't seem to pigeonhole itself to something. Like, you know, you can have synth and grim hex, you can have, you know, like, uh, the bass and marimba and, like, Levski and stuff. How much creative freedom do you have when it comes to your process and what you get to choose? I mean, I, I do it my own risk. <laughs> <laughs> I do it and then they, they just say if it's working or not. It has happened that it didn't work, so... I just have to redo it some something else, uh, and then I go from there. Mm. And then I, so so they give me quite quite a lot of freedom. Maybe and sometimes it's good. Sometimes, as I said, it's good to have freedom. Sometimes and sometimes it just just makes you more uh, you feel more responsibility for that. Which is, right. Which is good. Also, it was something uh, I really didn't want the game to sound like Star Wars. That was something I really didn't want to. So that's why there are no high trumpets in the game. That was something I decided right from start. I will, which is kind of very, very, very useful. Uh, I mean, it's awesome to have be able to use high trumpets in in it because it makes it very soaring and easier. To, not easier, but it, it's it's a great mechanism to make it soaring and ah, blast. But if I did that, I think it would sound quite too much like star wars and i think uh and i think that will be will make star Citizen lose personality more right. uh, yeah yeah 100%. more fan from star wars but they probably would say this this would sound like star wars online something like that I didn't want that feeling yes so yeah so yeah well, be, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that's uh, that's a great decision. <laughs> yeah, just just uh, drive your own IP and create your own flavor in both <laughs> visuals, lore, and music. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, think. and how how different is it like to compose for say sci-fi? This specific sci-fi, for instance, which has like you can choose inspiration for so many things. How different is it to like compose for this? And say like a more fantasy title. I think you did. You help with Wolfenstein Two and The Witcher Three. I mean, like how how different is it? Oh, it did, well, it's very different because it was different situations mm. and different uh, people and different teams. And um, so, I mean, Star Citizen. I'm I work as a as like a lead composer, so I have a lot more freedom. Right. And on Wolfenstein, I was hired as someone to help out in a specific task. So it was not, uh, I hadn't, didn't have that, that broad, uh, that broad uh, freedom. Uh, on Witcher 3, <laughs> that was uh, an interesting, I mean, I had at some point, 
uh, to choose between Witcher and Star Citizen. Uh, basically, because they both started at the same time. And, and I actually wrote a lot of music for that. Uh, I th- I th- also, I remember when I started out, the music on Witcher was completely, uh, was absolutely 100% orchestral. And I, I was hired initially to, uh, you know, no, not not even sure if I can say much of it, but I was hired to write on on, on that style of help help people to write on that it was more to help people to write on that style. And then and then um, I kind of had the opportunity to write a main theme candidate candidate for the project which was very much appreciated at the time and it was hybrid i merged the orchestra with uh, folk instruments that was the first time we heard on the back then and that idea was st- stuck on and was great and they did a great job merging that further even more uh with more folk instruments and i think that gave a very good personality i'm not sure if i mean i don't i don't take i don't take credit for it because uh, i mean i i literally when it started when the, in the next phase it was start to ramp up production i had star season starting out as as the main guy and and there as someone to help others to, to work on the game and um that was a tough decision but i really I really felt like Star Citizen would be the best thing for me at mm. the time. And I really think I'm right, you know? Well, we're, we're glad to have you on the project because, I mean, so far it's been, it's, it's been a trip. But like in terms of genres, like, so the fantasy genre, I mean, like, how different, how would, you, would your process change? Let's say you were the lead composer for, say, fantasy title A versus sci-fi title B. Like, would your process yeah. change at all, or would you still make the no. same kind of music based on like the concept art and the? I mean, yes, always based on the concept art. I think I I am Pedro, so I my music is has a bit of me. I, even though I tried sometimes to disguise it and try to make it not look like me, but it's as always my 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 uh, my DNA is there, and which is I think is cool. And um, uh, basically. Um, the main st- I write music most of the time in terms of harmony and melodically and try to do something that invokes me the feeling I want to have. And sometimes the instruments play a part of it. Play the timbrical part also plays out an important role in the setting. The s- setting, but, but I think the most most important is is about how the harmonies work and how the melodies work with the harmonies. And so fantasy is all all much about that the only difference is the instrumentation depending on the on the project itself uh, in the fantasy world we you can go very much more traditional which i'm i love doing it uh, actually that's what uh, i learned um, um, the most for, to do and sci-fi usually allow is a bit more open to sense and other sound sources but mm-hmm. you know warcorp is, it doesn't sound much like a synth soundtrack actually if you think about it, it could fit something that was not i mean i'm not sure if it would be sound like a fantasy but it could sound like a fantasy as yeah. well could could i mean in the proper setting i don't know uh in the end there was a lot of droney bass which is for fantasy usually doesn't work so well i mean people are not expecting it so maybe maybe in the fantasy there are some corollums that maybe maybe i would try to like uh make the base of the sound sound heavily with the orchestra playing you know what the double bass is the doubled when i give above with cellos that would be an easy way to approach it to make the you know the base of the sound while in the synth and then the, the sci-fi it's more open to have the bass played like a like like from a moog sub 30 sound which is the synth over here was awesome for that or several other synths that really do, do the job very well like you know zebra repro uh, repro one repro five as well the legend i mean i have them all i, I, have, <laughs> I think i with time i just got all the synths i could get because they all have wonderful omnisphere is great for the for several bases i mean i mean like there's uh, omnisphere with the uh, new atmosphere really got very well very good finally i just, took long enough <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, let's see, uh, for example, I'll open up one of the libraries that I had before Star Citizen. I mean, I just played around with the sound. It mm. has a nice sound, right? I also have a bunch of stuff going on here, which change the character of the sound. It doesn't sound like it just has a... Oh, it's very cool, actually. Kind of sounds cool with all the reverb. It's, yeah, my baby is really crying. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, that. like, uh, <laughs> you could add that as part of it to make it like a horror thing. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of sounded cool, really. Yeah. <laughs> what do I mean? I just that's awesome. kind of a, yeah. Chat says that the baby screams kind of work with that. It it does. I wasn't joking around. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It makes me worried. I, I should be no. there. Anyway, anyway, mm. anyway. It's okay, cool. We, we we won't keep you much longer. Uh, but one thing, one question that just popped into my head when you were talking about fantasy and Sith. Um, alien races are going to be introduced soon. Have you ever th have you pre uh, before given any thought on how you would compose music for those like would you also be interested in any uh new i did instrument new, new instruments that that race would would have in its past for instance yes i actually did i actually did i actually thought about it a lot and um stars in Zian. and i had some sense that I, some instruments that i did actually for that i never used them because uh well, meanwhile, I don't know, you know, the, the process, of, I mean, uh, and I still, I'm still, um, you know, CIG uh, hires me for more pressing things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this thing, you know, it still didn't, well, it came, it came up at some point, but then it's we had other agencies yeah. to, to deal with. The... Means it could be like a string instrument with some mm. reverb. If you wanted to make it abstract, I mean, uh, and I, I always imagined that the Vandu would be more like um, like a Mongolian throat singing. It's all like grunts mm. and stuff like that. So this is Zion, right? Music. Itself. <laughs> no. I love that you're playing this live with your keyboard, right? Yeah, I'm playing it live with yeah. my keyboard. I'm just exploring. <laughs> I didn't. I, I remember I did this. I actually created this, this these instruments mm -hmm. to to be eventually used for Zian. Mm -hmm. um, but then it, it just stopped for the Vanduul. Yeah, um, Vanduul is very much focused on Squadron Forty Two. So maybe uh, since I, uh, I'm not sure if um, Jeff. Mem Jeff, maybe Jeff Sinelli already has uh, ideas for it because he's he's working on it. So mm -hmm. I I really will see. Probably his score will be more about the story than the races. But anyway, probably he will do something about the race. So he will have some creative decisions that then I'll probably take advantage of it. But I always thought about a lot something like with um, metallic metallic drums and scrapes mixed oh, yeah. with you know the, the idea you said was great mongolian singers would be great as well and um you know just you know older low 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 pitched 
you know, so I, you didn't see the patch. I didn't show it. So here it is. So I even placed a Xi'an ship on it. So nice. So, so I mean, it inspired me. It's, it's again Omnisphere. I don't know why, because it, it can merge organic with non organic and stuff. So this is organic flute hybrid lead. What will the sound make it smaller? Oh, that's cool. This is that super cool sound. I was really inspired when it... Super. Let's remove the reverb. Love it. That's great. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> or, you know, maybe, maybe just some black meth metal for, um, for the Vandal. <laughs> I would love that actually. I, I love metal. I, oh, or I love metal. You, you know the. Um... I love really love metal actually. I've been work doing metal music for something else recently. So, so but uh, but it's uh, and it's it's really. I mean, it's awesome. I just love it. So let's just leave it like that. But I doubt they will accept. You know, fans. I'm not sure if. I, I don't know, but you rem remember in Mad Max, uh, remember in Mad Max Fury Road, you had the Doof guy just playing the uh, the electric guitar on f in the front of the war wagon. You know, yeah, can you imagine yeah. just one Van Duel hanging out in front of the king ship as it comes out of? I think, <laughs> I think that, will, that will be focused on Squadron Forty. I'm pretty sure that mm. will be a Jeff Zanelli decision. Do you, I don't know. I will see later on. But I would love to see a Vandal city that I could write the theme for it. I mean, that will be absolutely that would, that wonderful. Would be disgustingly cool. And, uh, and really will be different. Also, uh, I, if uh, another thing I did for the Xeon, I did, I did something with the orchestra and I, and I really loved it. It really sounded to me like Xeon, really, absolutely. I was perfect Xeon. Well, I, I detuned the orchestra that was in a live session, I detuned the orchestra. So if I had total freedom to do whatever I wanted with total budget, I will definitely go into that direction for Zian. I, will, I, I detuned the orchestra and the orchestra was all playing like uh, harmonics and that, and they just grew and I was, I really loved it. The sound was superbly awesome and I can't find it. Anyway, I mean, but but it was, I really liked it. But let's see. So yes, I thought about alien races, as you can see. So yeah, but let's see how how it, how it goes in the future. Um, so far, I, th I believe with I believe that what I've seen is more. Uh, I would preferably uh, personally, I would I'll probably love to see pyro system uh, first <laughs> before, or maybe the same time. I don't know oh, what yeah. will happen, but the, but the pyro glimpse that we had uh, on season one was pretty, pretty damn awesome. I really loved it. I and take I it you've already produced the music for that, right? Yeah, the music mm. for the season one. I'm excited would, that you're excited for it. <laughs> it was really cool. Mm. I really loved it. Um, I really loved everything. That was blew my mind it because was... when i was composing that uh, the citizen con demo just got videos with really low resolution stuff you know really not complete stuff so i never only when i saw it live i said like oh, okay it's like this that looks really cool and actually it's very cute curious that in each one that i got it was completely different so they were i could see they were which is something i really appreciate is that each time they gave me a run is a completely different. So I could see they are actually playing it to, to test. That's why they test and test. And when they go live in Cinegums, everything is live. So it's it always looks different. And I'm always anxious to see how the music will be, how it was implemented, if it will work. Because you never know. They, 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 they are doing all this different stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I think it worked very well. Actually, I think it was uh, almost bugging at some at a, point, at a certain point, but then they I don't know why that was, but it, it just worked really well. So it was awesome. I guess that's one yeah, of that, the. That's... Go on. Yeah, so I was going to say this is also one of the things that makes uh, composing for a video game that much more challenging than for a movie, because you have a a, a, a cut that's set 
So it it be, it'll play oh, the same every time in a movie, but in a video in a video game, it's different every time somebody plays it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. But in the v, in the films, you also have a lot of a, a huge other number of problems that you don't have. Well, you don't usually have in a video game, uh, like really really squished timelines. You know, you really have to compose like day and night and. It's a very hectic uh, world. Uh, even, I mean, less pr problems, yes, but you know, but you have less than half of the time. Well, in the city, in Star Citizen, I also have uh, usually very little time sometimes. But, uh, but I think in the movies, it's, it's always like that from start to finish. So it's, I mean, you really have to get, um, you really need the endurance or, or like a large team around you to help you keep the pace. Not usually it's like that. You just have a huge team of composers. I don't know if, I don't know if there's that. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not too good, you know. I would imagine how Star Wars would be if you had several composers writing for it. Probably not so special. Well, now you have the legacy from John Williams and everyone knows how it is, but imagine if John Williams was starting out to write it and then he had like four or five guys. He had orchestrated, but that was different. You know, without a, a very, you know, I think music has to come from one mind. Yeah, like um, Lord of the Rings, for instance, you know, it has that oh. light motif going all the way through it. If it was more than one person, then it would just be a whole bunch of different things. And as you say, mm. it would kind of like be like a DC well, movie where it's all the same all the way through and everybody, you know, it's... Yeah. But it works. It works mm. fine. Very well. But, you know, uh, you can still you can still sing the music from, from Howard Shore, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was awesome. Yeah. Awesome so, line. Um, so there's one unique piece of music to Star Citizen that um, yeah, it's so uh, I, I don't know what it's called. I don't think it was ever like publicly given a name. Um, I'm gonna call it "Take You on a Star Flight." I think that's from the 300i. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I, I, I'm not sure if I should have played that because copyright strike anyway. That, that's but. okay. I think but when I was talking, it ducked your audio anyway. So thankfully, oh, we won't oh. be coffee struck. <laughs> oh, okay. But um, so I think it was a uh, take you on a star flight, the uh, 300i. Um, like, oh, uh, yes. yeah. yeah. So with, with that, um, with that trailer, it actually had like uh, vocals to it, you know, like, yeah. uh, does a does a full version to that song exist, or were the lyrics just made just for that one minute and twenty seconds of? Uh... It was just made for that. The, the lyrics, you know, it would, the trailer was already done. I mean, the old structure was done. All the shots were locked, and my go, my my role in that one was to make a track that sounded like. Um, a normal track, you know, you know, commercial track that was that was not supposed to be following the scenes, and the scenes were following the music. Was but uh, any they and the difficult difficulty they, they had, the the lyrics had to come on top of that. It was super, it was super hard to do. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was I'd, I was a lot of stress to be for that one. Yeah, I I really thought. I could uh, at some point. It was f hard, and uh, let's see if I had. Could, you, you had yeah. a baby on the way at the same time, right? It was 2018, right? Mm. Was it 2018 or 2019? It was 19. 19, sorry, yeah. 19. Yes, 200, 300 eyes here, and yeah, and the lyrics were initially different. I can, I can show you some snippets of that. There was so many versions. I mean, there was so many versions to 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 fine tune into the shots and. Let's see if there is a version. Initially, it was this one. This was my voice to to try to to see how the melody will work with the mm. commercial. Mm. 
So I, I sang something that will work, and the, the guy with the lyrics did the lyrics, and I re, re, remade the, 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 the line to fit with the lyrics, made some adaptations there, and and then we went from there. I mean. <laughs> I think first was Moonrise, and then it was uh, we changed the lyrics as Midway. Away, come fly away. Fly. I'll take you on the star fly. And it changed the melody. We started to change the melody, and then in the last one, come fly away. I'll take you on the star fly. Head over heels, you and I will fall again and then through the magic past an intoxicating starlight. I'm just fast forwarding to see if there's and this, uh, the, uh, this was version 17, I think it was the last one. This version 15 has alt whisper. Oh, come fly with me. So that was me on the piano. Everything mm -hmm. was programmed by me, so it was not easy to be done. And to sound, I mean, I think it sounded natural in the end. It was great. And yeah, it was like it gave it character. It was properly an origin Jumpworks trailer because mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Also, yeah, the trailers also all have to sound like themselves. Um, and uh, so, yeah, well. Glad you enjoyed it. I mean, uh, so, so, but, but the question, I'm sorry, you told me, I think I missed the question. What this was the, the, um, the question about it? Uh, you were, oh, the, act, the, the question about it? You, I think you answered oh, that. I, I was asking. I, if there was a music. It's, yes, of course I did. Yeah. Mm. So there was no music. I did it looking at the trailer and trying to make it feel like a normal song that didn't had a trailer and then they they cut the trailer to the song but it was the opposite so it was oh, so backwards yeah so backwards so it was kind of harder i think anyway what is oh this is the first tracks for the first takes for the year 18. look how it started it was how it started And then this is version six. You can hear the station a bit more. Yeah. Oh, I'm fast forward. I like that. With the boom boom. Oh, that I really like that. But but then but then I had the request to now to to try to stick with the orchestra a bit more. Here, this is version eight. Yes, right. In this version, the the, the piano uh, was out. Then version nine, similar. And then I ended up in the version twenty eight. That was the final. <laughs> so and there's the version ten. And that I mean, this is similar. I don't know. There were maybe, you know, at the time it made sense. It was small difference, but right now I can figure it out. Version fourteen. Let's see how it is. I'm just first forming. That's why you're hearing jumps. Okay, there's more, more into the orchestra, more textures. Maybe the choir is not here. Nah, the choir didn't make it here in this version. Then version 28, which I think is one of the final one. Yeah, the choir is here. And then it has the, the, the big part, and then this is after. The... This is kind of polyrhythmic, so the, the, the drums are in, in, a, in a tempo, and the rest is in a tempo. And then. Ding, 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 ding. 
I, I think there are three rhythms at the same time going on here. So they are, so they just feel they are like in a groove lock that just meets uh, like each 12 seconds. They they go all the way. All and the that's you singing now, right? Yeah. Mm. And then, and this is the another groove lock to make a tempo change in the middle, which is something I I never did before. And then there's a turn. And then it, it goes to this new tempo. But before, so now it's like the closet. And before it was. Hmm. So this is also to give the sensation of the, the, the sensation of poly cultures, also in the rhythm. It's a hard one to do, I think. Is all the music in Star Citizen in the game? Is it synthetic or? Is there some that is actually then recorded with oh, live yeah. orchestra? Yeah, yes, a lot of it has a, has been recorded as well. Other is synthetic. This one is synthetic because I mean, but um, and in order, some others are also synthetic, but with the or but also when you hear the orchestra, orchestra was sampled just to be used at the time, just for star season. So I think it sounds pretty organic and pretty. I mean, to my ears at least, it sounds quite. I'll show you one that probably you will... There are a couple ones that I, I feel that, that are real and some that are not real. I didn't prepare for this, so I'm not sure if I will have these files here to show you the comparison to say which one is real. And But that, that would be cool if I could do it uh, right now. In, uh, uh, in, tech, in uh, the Austin Star Citizen, after it was done, Jared actually played a bunch of uh, the orchestral soundtrack that they were they're preparing for a separate release and you could hear the difference and it's like it's so much warmer uh and um of course yeah well, let, let, but i mean i mean the uh the, the 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 samples that you use are really good already but yeah they're just um a good there's one that's very different they're just very tough uh i mean well i don't have but you know i fooled uh, i mean the guys on on the team thought it was real orchestra and but uh, in this kind of sound for for our corp which is mainly synthetic I, the idea is not to to mask anything i mean i mean this is kind of production that you know hans zimmer would do you know mm. for a brother, uh, it's very hybrid. There's some stuff that's real, some stuff that's not real. And I think that's how most of the soundtracks nowadays are done. Mm. There are parts of that are real, parts that are not real. The goal of this, it's just like pop singers. Pop singers nowadays use uh, autotune not as uh, an artifact because they, they can't sing, but as an effect because you will we just enjoy it in certain styles of songs. It's... So nowadays, I think it's the same with soundtrack. Sometimes we use artificial stuff not to not to make it cheap because not cheap is all to do it, um, uh, but to make it um, with another tone, basically. Yeah, with yeah, a, to give it a, a unique sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard sometimes to get with a real orchestra, or it's not cost effective to use backers money to hire an orchestra just to make two or three lines. If ninety five percent of that is not is not actually live orchestra. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to me, I think. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it's fun both ways. I like doing both. So there are pros and cons. But I always try to use live people when I can. Always, always, always. I mean, a good example of that, of that hybrid, will be the 600i commercial. I don't know if you remember. Okay. Which has a that, symphony that, motion, that, yeah. The symphony mode that has a hybrid sound of real and not real. So, and I think... Uh, I think it serves a purpose well. I think, uh, I think, I think so at least. I don't know if you enjoyed it, but uh, but so uh, I think uh, so. I think it's like that. So I think I don't think um, 
there's a lot of real orchestra as it was you know in the backers of and I think in the future maybe uh, I think there will be um, that we will try to make some more orchestral sessions because there are some tracks that, you know as after we do them it, it's much more cost efficient if you, at the end of the line we see look back and see what what is the stuff that we did that would benefit from a real orchestra oh what then this you know this 20 or 40 tracks needed so it's much more cost effective it's cheaper to hire an orchestra okay we'll do just this whole this whole stuff in a row and we we'll pay like half the cost then it will cost if we were just hiring all the time it's two or three tracks that that were coming out so, so that's also another mm -hmm. that's also why we we we, we do it the, this way so but i think it, it's um i don't know I, I still think it's very honorable. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. I don't know. Mm. But Ultimately, I know. your music is amazing. And you mentioned like, uh, you know, not wanting backer money to be spent on orchestra stuff, but I could see, you know, down the line at some point, like uh, the same way Ani Roth goes around the world with um, Final Fantasy Distant Worlds, I could see Star Citizen doing the exact same thing. The music that, that we have awesome. is... That would be awesome. That, yeah. would be awesome. Mm. that would be awesome. I know, I think it would be a very cool concert to have the orchestra there and with the add-ins from the set that i created i mean with the really loud speakers imagine hearing the the, the track from our corp, the drums will be hitting really i mean it will feel like i mean it will be awesome also it would be even more awesome if you could actually ask the drummers to to go with the multi-rhythmical stuff it would be really hard to be in live it will be awesome because it's really hard to be to do it live and mm -hmm. but if you could nail it that will sound like magic i mean and it's um it would be pretty cool and the, and the scenes that we have so from star scene you know the vistas it was super inspiring and big big screen i mean i'm telling to you this as as someone that would like to watch as well so <laughs> <laughs> just thinking oh i think it would be cool i think it would be cool it's amazing that you're a fan of the game as well as also working on it in like in a such a professional capacity you know like uh well, i think i think uh you do you you shouldn't never i think to be to make good uh, good work as a composer or as an artist you can't be too much fanboy as well mm. because you have to be uh, you know cold and professional when you do it and you cannot not be in the, in the fanboy uh, style because, oh, yes, I can't wait. And you get so excited, you, you just don't focus on what you have to do. And also, you cannot be so distant that you just don't relate with it and just don't care and you just do whatever it needs just in a professional way. I think, I think it's great when you, when you try to do, uh, try to be in the middle. I'm a fan. I'm a really huge fan of this, uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I, th I think I found I found a good middle ground to be, you know, I mean, to be cool when 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 needed and where and and also excited when it's needed because sometimes you need to be excited to get the, the momentum going sometimes. So I think, and and also speaking with you guys is also always a pleasure because it really fools me the passion and my you know it's great it's you know a game can be great you have so many great games out there that have no community that's such a big privilege so thank you really thank you so much for the, for this for waiting so long my goodness <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, um, now, speaking of, I, I'm sure that uh, your wife would appreciate if we didn't keep her waiting much longer. Uh, so I, I think um, <laughs> she's she's super, but yeah, I mean, it's really, uh, yes, it's uh, 8 o'clock. So, yes. I, mean, yes. So, um, I have a closing question. If uh, Okay. okay. Um, do you have any advice for any, any of those aspiring composers out there looking to follow in your footsteps? I actually have have an email from someone that asked me this, and uh, and but I have to write him back uh, with a proper email, not just a short one. But um, I think the, f the first thing is um, learn music. Learn music. I mean, it's, it's not uh, try to learn as much as possible while you're while you are in the age of learning. Not just doing like a one year course on music composition or music production and then just trying to see if you can get out of it like that. I mean if you have I mean if you have good 
it's, you don't need the rules, you don't need the theory, but it really helps sometimes. Sometimes it really helps a ton. And um, above all, if you're gonna, if you want to be a composer, it depends on the style of composer you want to be. But if you want to be a style of composer that really wants to work with orchestras, when you're in front of a of a concert master uh, from a, an orchestra, he will have you know he's been studying classical music for forty years. You better not make a fool of yourself when you speak to him. I mean, they can always notice just by looking at the score uh, if you really know what you're doing, because you can. I mean, I feel the music has to be written in a way that each of the per people. Uh, of, of the musicians feel there's something that is given to them. They work together, but in, to them as well, it works correctly. Also, it's also always good for them not to notice, you know, basic errors of harmo harmony. Well, no, it's, 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 a, it's a, such a big topic to, to, to speak because errors are sometimes what makes music beautiful. So it's not always the... But, you know, if you have a good taste... You can you know one thing is to apply an error because you want to to make an effect. Another thing is to make an error just because it was sloppy. For example, and I've heard that in some big scores as well. Uh, sometimes a composer forgets to place the third in a chord, uh, and you just get a chord without a third, and just you hear the, the root and the fifth, and then it goes on correctly. And it, and you know all the musicians notice that. And they immediately tell, kind of, oh, this guy has no clue what he's doing, <laughs> something like that, which is cool because they're being paid and have to be professional anyway. But it's always cooler if you know what you're doing because they, they're playing and they, okay, and then there's, oh, this is cool. I'm having fun. And then when you have fun, they kind of start to interpret and to yeah. give more life into the score. And it's important while you, when you're doing scores that are heavily influence in your orchestras uh, it's not not that much in when you have sense around and, or just hybrid but yeah uh, i think it won't hurt you i think i think uh there's no rush to start at 21 doing music for a game or for movies i started at 26 and uh 26 yeah 26 so after 10 years of learning and i i don't know what the future holds for me but but I don't think it, it was bad to wait and uh, wait until I felt really, I mean, really ready to go on. I mean, because um, at some point you have a, an opportunity and they'll ask like for a really hard stuff to be done. And you, you are such in a short amount of time that you really have to use it all to all the knowledge is little for what you have in front of you. And, and if you succeed, you have a good, you have a good prospect. If you don't, you just get, ah, okay, well, see you next time, or something like that. So that's right. something. I, I, I guess that's the perfect uh, <laughs> way to say, uh, right. see, you, see you next time. I really summarized it, really summarize it <laughs> too much, but it's kind of, it's kind of, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And always do it because you love music. Yeah. You have to love music. You have to, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like to be alive because I can do music. That's that's the reason. That's the reason. Oh, I never did this to be a professional. I just did this because I wanted to be a musician. You mm -hmm. know, you really have to love it. And, and I'm fortunate. I mean, I cannot tell you. Yes, too too much fortune to be. I mean, to this. I mean, this is. Sometimes I, I pinch myself. I'm pretty sure that in ten years I'll look back in this and. And feel like, oh my God, I was so lucky at the time. Or maybe at the end of 10 years, I will have even better opportunities. I hope so. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't happen. All the best. Can, you, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. You, you cannot never, you can't never take anything from granted. You know, sometimes things just don't work out for whatever reason it is. You're not lucky enough to, to be in the right place in the right moment. So, so uh, what I can tell you is, uh, yeah, sure. I worked really hard at school, and, and when I was, even though I was, I was, I think I had talent. I was always a good student or very good student, but I always, you know, work really hard into it. For example, just give you a small t tip: so when you when you're learning Bach, uh, you at some point you'll learn Bach harmony, which is important for for the for the for the 
for your background in harmony and voice leading so and um and uh well, when you're in school, you have like one, one assignment per week or something for three three months or four months. And that's about it or something, or maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. But I remember at the time that I I, I, I just, I really wanted to practice a lot. So I, I ended up reharmonizing like 200 Bach chorales at the time. So by the end of it, I was extremely fast doing it. Was it good? Uh, I think so. I think it really proved useful at some points. That doesn't make me a better composer for doing that, but it doesn't hurt. You know, so I, I, I gave a lot of effort. And, <clears throat> and 14 years after I started my first work as a composer, was I was 26, I just turned, out, turned 40 now. And I look back and I see, I, I think it was worth it. I think it was worth it. So, so... So I'm just saying from my own perspective, you don't have to learn anything to be successful or to have you, some people just, just, just do by ear and are absolutely amazing. But, you know, if you can combine two, <laughs> both things. Mm -hmm. so, always, always have in mind, the ear is the final, has the final say. You can, you can know all the, all the theories and all the harmonies, all everything. And then in the end, if your ear says, nah, and just listen to your ear and uh you know because that's 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 what matters theory comes after the practice so yeah that's it <laughs> and well so it's very very uh, thankful for you for you guys to wait for me for so long and for being here and for enjoying my work and to listen to me speaking for so long i mean <laughs> i mean thank you so much for oh we everything. appreciate it thank you thank you oh, it was worth the wait Oh, definitely. Yes. You oh, definitely thank you for the wait. So th thank, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Pedro. No, no, thank you. It was, it was really, uh, really, really special with this one. Oh, everyone is special. I mean, this community is special. As long as we have this community, uh, and this kind of community that you have is this very special one, very hard. I've played online many games and many games have very complicated communities that really make the game not pleasant to work or to play in Ugh, so bad and i feel stars in has such a nice community and if we uh, and i think uh if it grows in this quality not in the quantity but in the quality that it's been growing over the years as i said i think i think 100 systems will be not enough for, <laughs> for what will come in the future that's what i feel i feel this is can be something even bigger but but so far it's been great thank you a lot thank you all right so everyone thank you so much for watching and listening um i have been darionator uh, I've, and i was joined with my co-host meyer and very special guest pedro camacho the lead composer for the wonderful game star citizen uh this has been fortnightly frontier and I'll guess I'll see you in three years again, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. It'll be a good sign. Bye.